Hello everybody and welcome back to Horizon Zero Dawn. We're just gonna go back to Meridian because I'm I'm just way too intrigued by this. Um, but I did actually want to grab on the way, want to grab that vantage point. So we'll do something that's not exactly a main quest right off the bat. And I know that's not the main, main quest, but still, it's a big one. Oh, man. Everybody's playing uh, WoW right now, because on the day I'm recording this, BFA just came out. And I do have a Warcraft account that I got recently. And I'm sure like I have a ton of friends who are playing it. And maybe I'll have to hop on tonight and see how it goes, <laughs> if I can even get on. I haven't seen anything with problems getting on. I think they were expecting a big, big surge of people. So hopefully they beefed up the servers and everybody had a good time playing. Yikes. Okay. Vantage. It's in this, there's the stinking spire. Ouch. What, ow, what, are you serious? You're gonna ouch me, for real? Wait. I've seen this four times okay. already. I was like, I have to go uphill. I know I do. So, over there, maybe. Or over here. around the other way maybe I feel like they make it fairly obvious there it is the natural bird poop wall climbing <gasps> indication Keep going up. Oh god. But now I don't know. Oh. Please don't fall. Um. Ah, okay. I can't even, like, see it. I'm just, like, rolling the the stick around and hoping she figures out what I want. Up! We go up! Come on, come on. Please! Oh my gosh, this is terrifying. Alright! Okay. The pocket shit storm tour. Day nine. I was setting up my tent right here when oh. Wyatt's call came through. It is. I came as fast as I could, but you'd already slipped into a coma. We never got a chance to say goodbye. Hmm. So this is what it used to look like. Huh. So the spire did come at least after part of the apocalypse? So Meridian was like nothing. They've got like these, I don't know, military fighter jets coming in. The mountain range is like, was like decimated. Look, there's a mountain range in the background. I mean, maybe there's one, I just can't see it very well. But like, those plateaus, like all that's left of them is what is the city is on now. Okay, let's look at the... Mom, my plan was to go camping here after the Amos 15 launch. I've been working overtime for the past nine months, so I was pretty frazzled and figured I should take a weekend to relax before crunch started up again. 
I was studying at my tent when Wyatt's call came through. He said it was an emergency. I called a lift spin vert and made it to Denver General in less than 27 minutes. So it was too late. You already slipped into a coma. I didn't understand how that could be, but when I told Wyatt to explain, he just kept choking up, waving me towards the care station. So it was the hollow doc that broke the news, how you'd been diagnosed a year earlier, the adverse reactions to gene therapy and polymer vascular replacements, the six months of mobile dialysis. I couldn't believe you kept it all secret from me. Even at the height of crunch, I called you once or twice a week, so you just sat there listening to me and enthused with my latest project or complain about workplace politics, and all the while you were dying? It didn't make sense. I marched back to Wyatt, cornered him, and demanded that he explain. He said you hadn't wanted to distract me, that I was doing important work and needed to focus. You know, as though the latest Amos launch and the palladium and rhodium it'd bring back to Earth mattered more than the ma that was already here. Wyatt kept saying how proud you were of me. He even parroted that onwards and upwards phrase of yours. He said I should get back to work, and that's what you'd have wanted, that he'd stay at the hospital and keep me informed. I didn't go back to work. I called in and took arguing my way past two supervisors, a labyrinthian automated HR menu, a human resources AI, and an anal defensive benefits executive to activate my personal leave, but I did it. And then I sat at your bedside for the next seven days. I kept thinking of the hospital after my OD at the amphitheater. I kept thinking that if you came out of the coma, I wanted my face to be the first thing you saw. On the eighth day, they pronounced you dead. After the funeral, I went back to work, but I wasn't really there. I kept telling myself to focus that it was okay to be there. It was what you'd have wanted after all, onwards and upwards. But my work fell behind. When my supervisor called me in for an emergency review, I told myself to play cool, accept the criticism, and promise to do better. It didn't go like that. I snapped and shouted at him, and then broke down, sobbing uncontrollably. Two minutes and three sec drones later, I was standing outside the Pharaoh building, blinking the sunshine, straightening up my bunched up clothes. An alert on my focus indicated that I should go home for the day, and then report for a disciplinary review on Monday. But I didn't go home. Another idea had risen up in my mind, already fully formed. I guess I'd already been thinking of doing it for a while. I took a lift spin to Pioneer Park. Ten minutes basking around on a truth test to show I wasn't a cop was all it took to make a connection. I went home with the drug, started using it, didn't stop. Duster, snake, skydive, overcast, no razor ring at least. I didn't take calls, didn't show up for the disciplinary review on Monday morning. A friend stopped by and hammered on the door till I answered it. When he saw what was happening, he staged a one-man intervention. I agreed to go into treatment, but I didn't harbor any illusions. Up to use of personal leave was bad, but use of psych SA leave? Career suicide. Sure, they couldn't legally fire me for it, but I've been around FAS long enough to know they'd find a way. My career is over. I thought I was at rock bottom, but I was wrong, of course. I still had a long way to fall. Man, that sucks. Bummer. Like, I don't know, he was doing well, and then his mom died, and exact everything she didn't want to happen, happened. It's like, don't do that, man. I know it's hard, but it's just like, come on. You gotta do it like that. You gotta do it like that. Oh, yay! Look at that. The long leg lens. Alright. Well, there's that. Repel down. I guess I could just trap them. Oh, since I'm going back into the, uh, place, I'm going to wear this one. I know it doesn't matter, and I really should be paying more attention to the, uh, Oh, I get to go to the palace! <sighs> let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I get to go to the palace! I have an invitation this time, suckers. Let me see that Sun King's face. I'm gonna see if he's a hottie. I gotta go meet Varl, though. Is he still around? Varl's still kicking it? Like, if I go back and talk to him, we'll actually be like, Oh, hey, you came back to visit instead of just generic NPC stuff. I'll have to watch that episode again. Okay, we can... we have a path? Okay. I'll have to watch that episode again where he says that so I can remember where... Where I'm supposed to meet him. It's somewhere back in the Nora homeland, but I'm not exactly sure... Where? Only the finest fits here. See for yourself. Like, I think, because they're outcasts now, sort of, technically. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. It's a lot more crowded in the daytime. Wait. Was that? I thought the gate was closed last time I saw. I have an invitation! Let me in. 
No one goes into the palace without an invitation. <sighs> oh, hi. Yes, you. The Blameless Marad. Greetings, Aloy. I am known as Blameless Marad. Please come with me. You're needed for an important consultation. What do you mean? Where's Erend? He's inside, attending the Sun King, where we should be without further delay. Follow me, please. If... All of these people are here to see the Sun King. Yes, and each has come to ask a favor of him. Unpleasant, but that's politics. The Sun King is eager to meet you, the machine tamer with a curious eye for detail. It's all very intriguing. I'm sure I'm not here to intrigue you. Too late. I'm gonna, I'm gonna haul you off over the edge of this cliff, and how, how intrigued would you be then? Passed by some outlander woman? I do get to go to the front of the line. I do get to go to the front of the line. Why? Because I'm not a rich, stuck up person. Ignore them. Are. Nobles are like children who whine when they don't get a second helping of dessert. I'm well aware already. This is what's the sun king like? The most important thing is what he isn't like. His father. Yeah. I think you'll find him to be a reasonable man. Well, you can't just compare him to his father forever. He's got to have his own traits. Oh! Oh, you're just chilling out here. Aloy of the Nora. She who sees the unseen. Welcome. It would seem you have done me a great service. Erend, tell her what you found. I, I checked Ursa's tomb. You were right, Aloy. The body is missing a scar below her right knee. I gave it to Ursa when we were kids, fighting over a toy sword. If the body is not Ursa's, then we must assume she is still alive. And I will not abandon her. We only know she was taken, not who took her. I can help with that. Ursa has an enemy among the Oseron. A warlord named Durval. Impossible. Every clan in the claim has been hunting for him since the liberation. He has to be dead by now. No other Osoram had the motive and ingenuity to lure Ursa into this trap. I expect to find him lurking somewhere near the border. I've already sent an agent to investigate. He'll be waiting for word from us at the marketplace in Pitchcliff. I can't move troops to the border without provoking the Osoram. But I could send a few vanguardsmen. And perhaps an exceptionally gifted Nora as yeah, well. Yeah, okay. He's back up. Yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> she's Aaron, like, I think she's blushing, Let me actually. discuss it with her privately. Don't leave me alone with this guy. He's way too attractive and charming. I hate to impose further after all you've done, but this is a matter of great importance to He's me. He's really attractive. Uh... It sounds like Ursa means a lot to you. Without her Asaram vanguard, I would not have been able to liberate Meridian and end my father's brutal reign. Since then, it has been difficult to maintain peace between our tribes. But Ursa has a way of making her people see reason. So you see, I need her back at my side. And quickly. Really? People are, I guess, I don't know, I, I don't trust, I didn't trust him either, but I trust him completely now, <laughs> now that I've seen him. Who is Durval, exactly? To understand Durval, you must first understand my father. He truly thought of himself as a sun god. Your brother died. His mind was broken. He believed that blood sacrifice would solve, well, everything. So he raided the other tribes for victims, especially the Asaram. Durval fought back. He crafted powerful weapons and rallied his people. My father responded with the ultimate cruelty. He captured Durval's wife and daughter and sacrificed them in the Sun Ring. Yikes. So he's kind of gone and he doesn't trust at all anything. I don't blame him in a way, you know? Like, terrible things are done. I'm surprised the Karja Kingdom is still standing at all. So, why would Durval go to so much trouble to kidnap Ursa? He felt she betrayed him. She fought by his side until she realized he planned to raise Meridian and butcher its people. And she came to me. 
Together, we stopped him and liberated the city from my father. Durval has spent every moment since trying to get revenge. Mostly on the other Asaram who fought with us. He's only one he tribe, so many though. powerful enemies. I thought we'd seen the last of him. I was wrong. Yeah, like, he's only one little small clan in, like, a bazillion tribes who don't want to side with him. I'd like to ask you something about the Sundom and its politics. By all means. What a reasonable man. What can you tell me about the Shadow Karja? What do they have to do with Ursa? They are remnants of my father's regime, holding out at the fortress of Sunfall to the west. Like him, they care only for domination, and seek to draw upon the power of the sun by spilling blood in its name. Since Ursa helped me take this city from them, they were perfect scapegoats. Durval knew this, of course, and planned it well. So I feel like Ursa should be like the queen then, not just like the leader of your Osram vanguard, but like, she's obviously like a political and a military power in and of her own self. Like, marry her already, dang it. You talk about her so nice too. Your politics seem very complicated. The Asaram are friends, but enemies too? I couldn't have liberated Meridian without the help of Ursa and her Asaram freebooters. Many of them have settled here. But the Eldermen of the Asaram clans and the claim have become jealous of their success. So have many Karja nobles. It's a volatile situation, especially given the fact that my father raided the Asaram for years. Ursa helps keep the peace. Promising a future based on mutual gain. But some, like Durval, will never let go of their venom. I'm in love. Quite a place you've got here. You can almost see the little people below the mesa. Nice! You don't approve? Well, I have a secret for you. Neither do I. But we must be patient. Change won't come in a single sunrise. But will it happen at all? While men live in palaces? Ooh. It might. <laughs> if people like you help me... Oh, he's out. too charming! He's way too charming. They call you a sun god who killed his own father in order to unite the tribes in harmony. Is any of it true? They say you can see the invisible, split an arrow at 50 paces, and tame machines at a glance. Oh. <laughs> it's not too far off. Well... I would like to unite the tribes in harmony, but you saw how many courtiers I have to deal with first. Maybe next week. <laughs> okay, I do kind of like him. Doo -doo -doo. I need to get going. I know. Well, they say kings should never beg. But please, help me find Ursa. Who says that? Well, Murad, for one. <laughs> Don't hesitate to ask him or Aaron if you have further questions. All right, handsome. I'll do. I'll do what I can. That's oh, fine. Hey, guy. So, I thought Ursa was dead, and I thought Durval was dead. Dead doesn't seem to mean what it used to. Or maybe I'm just an ass. Or maybe death would have been better Whatever. for her. All I know is that it's time to find my sister and get some payback. I hope Murad's guy grabs us a lead. Did Ursa ever tell you anything about Durval? Well, we were both under his command for a while. Sort of. Helped him recruit an army to take out the mad Sun King. But then he got real creepy with Ursa. Uh -huh. Needless to say, she wasn't interested, but he wouldn't let it go. Not to mention the fact that we realized he wanted to murder every Karja, not just the bad ones. Long story short, he's a grazer-licking dumbbag. In some situations, some people, some women would maybe prefer to be dead rather than stuck in the hands of somebody who's ultra-creepy towards them. Might have been a more merciful fate. Avad seems committed to finding your sister. Yeah, those two got along. <laughs> And some people say they shacked up, but I, I don't buy it. Seems a little skinny for A little me. skinny? Oh, okay, some bad images. <laughs> Let's just focus on finding her. 
and kicking Gerbil's ass. <laughs> some bad images are forming in my head. We're just gonna go kick some butt. Oh I my go. gosh. Don't stand me up in pitch cliff, okay? Ursa needs us. I'm gone. Man, I'm super intrigued. I want to see if Ursa and him get married. Or Ursa and whatever his name is. The Sun King get married. Sun Kings. The Chronicle of the Sun Kings. The founder of Araman, who guided our forefathers from the. Sh it's all in caps, so I feel like it was a machine. It's like a. What's it called? The uh, acronym. The founder, Araman, who guided our forefathers from the shadows of the savage east into the fastness of the Mesa Valley, who, and who, reading the signs of sun and shadow both, delivered them to the site of Holy Meridian. The bounteous Amavad, who saw the, oversaw the clearing and selling of the royal maze line so that none who walked in the sun's favor should go hungry again. Who cut back the jewel to claim the rich estate lands for the first houses of the sun court. The far-seeing Sadahin, who expanded the sun's dominion to the north, south, and east, setting a gate at the Bright Market Harbor, and who, before the sun at its highest, proclaimed these lands would be known as Karja Sundom, and so, by the light, it was good. Generous Judawan, who stocked the metal markets with the spoils of his own trampler hunts, and who allowed trade from the north and south, even permitting outlanders the gift of the counting glyphs. Ha ha ha! So they might understand more than simple barter. They gave language to everybody. How kind! Zavarad, the pilgrim sun king, whose tower was raised to the top of the ridge of Bales, and who crossed the great waters at the daybreak, so the sun might expand, extend ever further, and to honor this passage had the great blazing arch raised on the far shores. Bold Eriv, who saw the sun's passing into the west as a challenge, and forged after it with a great army to be pushed back three times at the great canyonlands that would be known as the Daunt, until on the fourth time his cohort broke through and they were and he vanished and were vanished in the lands beyond. Prudent Basadi, who had the mantle of his fallen brother thrust upon him suddenly, who ordered the construction of the fortress of Sunfall and the garrison of, at Blaze and Arch, and declared the land beyond it to the forbidden west where only the sun may go. So these are the sun kings. I guess some, I was thinking maybe some of them were, are gods, but, um... But why do they capitalize the whole name? Um, some of these could be legendaries, though, like legendary Sun Kings who are actually maybe some sort of machine or something. Uh, Kudavin the Returner, who strove to bring civilization to the Savage East, returned after many strenuous endeavors, saying it was no longer fit for the people of the Sun, and called for the building of great towers and walls so this wild land might be observed safely. Yeah. <laughs> the Returner. <laughs> that's a, that's a really strong attempt at a nice name for somebody who gave up on a war that was fruitless. Renan the Firebird, who saw the Sundom suffer unprovoked attack by the Teneketh hordes. Oh yeah, unprovoked. Who, against the protests of his advisors, accompanied his army to confront them. Under the sun, he claimed victory, though he was so greatly scarred, he wore his blazing helmet from that day. Nahis, who was a hunter as much as a sun king, and called for the proudest men of the noble houses to prove themselves in competition beneath the sun. And that those who felt the greatest machines would be situated as the first sunhawk and hawks of the hunter's lodge. The illuminated Marzin, who the sun visited with visions so vivid and grand, it commissioned many statues and frescoes of his visage in Meridian. Uh, okay, and for his summer palace in Sunfall, had the greatest citadel rays, where he remained painted, where he remained painting until he took deathly ill from his own pigments. That's a strange way to die. I mean, it's a common way in some places and sometimes periods of the world, but geez. they're like, King, he, he just uh, painted images of himself till he died. Kivas, elder brother of Marzid, who decreed each family with a suitable male child should submit that child to the service of the Sundance's then depleted ranks, and had the artisans turn their attention from works of art to outfitting each soldier of the sun with the very finest armor, halberd, and bow. Why not girls, too? It's so boring. Jiran, who in its early years was a strong sun king, defending the Sundom and the encroachment of other tribes and the derangement of the machines, but who became greatly addled and ordered the spilling of much blood in the sun's name, threatening to bring a twilight time upon us. Avad, the liberator, whose deeds cannot yet be recorded. Because he hasn't done a ton yet, I guess. Man, I could live here, though. So beautiful. I mean, the guy's got a great view. 
I liked her snark though. Oh, you can almost see the little people from here. And he's like, yeah, about that. Okay. So we're going back. Oh, the holy cow. Holy cow. Hang on. How high a level is this? Is this still level 15? Holy cow. That's a far long away, my good man. My good man. Jeez. Jeez. All right, well, let's get started then. Hang on, okay. No. Yep, fast travel. Let's do it. I wish I could have companions traveling with me. This loading screen's gonna take 10 years because I am traveling so far away. Um, but I think I could make the trip, especially if I got on a strider. I could get the, I could make the trip in like a day. According to the night and day cycles. Oh, did you hear? I saw, I haven't been reading much about Assassin's Creed Odyssey because I kind of just want, I kind of just want to experience it on my own. But they are gonna have. Uh, oh no no no! This was Cyberpunk. Never mind. Cyberpunk. I also haven't been reading too much about it because I just want to. just want to experience it, right? I don't want to keep being thrown these tidbits. I just want to do it. Um, but apparently, Cyberpunk is going to have um, a day-night cycle, and it's going to have. Um, oops. How do I summon my horse? Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, uh, weather. It's gonna have, uh, its own weather patterns. Don't you do it, doggy. I need to find a strider. There's, like, no striders. Alright, we're just gonna run. That's how it's gonna be. We're gonna do it. It's gonna be great. This is a tense situation. I have the shell walkers, a whole bunch, a freaking bunch of them over there. And I have a bunch of crocodiles over here. Oh my gosh, I don't know. And I can't really outrun them, and I can't override them. They actually might. Try these guys. Please. Okay, sorry about that. My dog keeps barking, so I keep having interruptions, which is just great. It's just great. up yeah well right now we're just trying to get somewhere I don't got time to deal with this corruption zone not unless I <laughs> <laughs> 
sensitive to sound, this massive machine burrows underground and surfaces with devastating force? Holy freaking cow! Oh, I just got the shivers. Gotta stay in the bushes. I have no idea. You have to tie that one to the ground and hope for the freaking best. This world is so scary. It wasn't like, here's a rock breaker area. It was just like, here's a corruption area. But here's a bunch of new monsters you didn't know existed. Where's the campfire? Stinking, stinking campfire. It's getting snowy again. We are just, oh, I just like jumped into the fire. Jeez Louise. Man, what are those? Okay. Oh, the corruption zone just goes into the road too, like just barely. Is it those things that I'm seeing? I can get close enough to scan on my will. Oh, that's the crocodile? Oh, they are the crocodiles. Why are they? And there's like those big old belly things over there. Why is this so difficult? I think I can. I don't know. Maybe I can't actually. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh, my dog keeps barking. There's like strangers in the house. It's my friend's family. And he can't murder them and he's mad about it. But those are apparently called tramplers, which apparently we've encountered. Scrapper, Lancer, Long Leg Trampler. Oh, I do remember that. I do remember. been a harrowing journey. I don't even, maybe I can cross the river? Am I supposed to turn somewhere? Okay, we're getting into the nook territory, I think. We're getting there! We're getting there! Oh my gosh. Okay, I think I am gonna call this one here. We got most of the way there. We're nearly, nearly there to Pitch Cliff, which is like way super far north. And wow, I didn't think I'd be willing to follow a quest this far out of my way, but there I go. So 
But anyway, thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying as much as I am. And I hope to see you in the next one.